Hi everyone, I'm Marbos here, and welcome to the Lamplighters League. So this is a game that's coming out on October the 3rd, but I can play it a few days early. And I would probably describe it as an XCOM-like, although it does have some real-time infiltration mechanics, not just turn-based combat mechanics. And it's a game developed by Hairbrain Schemes, which is a company you might have heard of, they developed games such as Battletech or Shadowrun. Battletech was a pretty damn good tactical turn-based game, so they certainly have experience in this genre. And uh, yeah, we are going to take a look at the Lamplighters League. Like I said, it's coming out on October the 3rd, and this is the full game that we're playing here. So without further ado, let's get into it. There are three difficulty levels, Easy for players who are new to turn-based tactical games. Medium for players familiar with turn-based tactical games. And hard if you want a challenge. I think we can try hard, why not? I think you can change it during the game, but I'm not 100% sure. You can also create a custom game. Let's take a look, I haven't looked at this actually. Introduction missions. Okay, you can skip the intro, you can disable the tutorials, you can change some other settings, agent loss, high stakes hand, missing in action, self-preservation. Here are the explanations on the right side. Metagame difficulty, easy, normal, hard. Okay. Combat difficulty, easy, normal, hard. And phenomena impact. Less impact, normal impact, and more impact. Okay. Right, so let's try hard. Why not? Here's late. Hey! Hey. <coughs> You're uh, welcome. Well done. What's your name again? The Gentleman Jin. At your service. Hmm. And we're married to that name, are we? What's wrong with my name? Alright, so that was the intro. How about I find our missing courier? You stay here and guard my back. So you can get the baggage yourself. And we'll start from the tutorial, why not? I already did play a little bit, just enough to know the basics, but we'll go through the tutorial anyway. So rotate camera, open menu, group and group. Press G or double click on an agent to group the agents together. When grouped, unselected agents automatically follow the one under your control, and enemies can't catch them in their field of vision. Alright? To control each agent individually, press G again, or left click on a single agent to ungroup them. Only nearby agents can group up. To include faraway agents in a group, move them closer together before pressing G. Alright. So move the selected agent, sprint with shift. You can also use the mouse to move, click on the ground to move the agent to the location and double click to sprint. You can also hold down the left mouse button continuously, move the agent in the direction of the cursor. All right, and right click to rotate the camera. So quite a few different ways to control your dudes and do that. As long as you have, I think. So, about three hours. Got it. Noise. 
Sprinting makes noise indicated by expanding rings around the agent. Other sources of noise include firing a weapon or destroying an object. Enemies who hear a noise will become suspicious and may move to investigate. Alright? From the apartments beyond comes the melody of a French horn, faint but bold against the city's murmurs. Okay. Most doors can be opened one way or another. You're playing in infiltration mode, where agents move in real time around the map. Agents have real time roles, either sneak, browser, or saboteur. The door ahead is bolted from the other side, but a sneak Latif can uh, climb up a nearby netting and then unlock the door for Ingrid. Okay. Well, there we go. And unlock it from the other side. Here you go, done. Then we can group up again. Breaking walls. Ingrid is a bruiser, able to bring down weakened barriers to create new paths through the environment. Use Ingrid's real-time ability to break through this crumbling wall. Alright. <laughs> yes, you just need to want it bad enough. And you can break a wall. It's easy. Haven't you watched the movies? Just punch the wall hard enough and it will break. Well, here's the courier. He looks pretty dead to me. The poor guy's still warm. The package can't be far. All right. Up we go then. Another of those masked soldiers. Enemy sighted. Who are they? No. There's a lookout up ahead in the well, in a well defended position. Get too close, and agents will enter the guard's field of vision causing him to become suspicious. A frontal attack is an option, but not the only one. Scoundrels like Ingrid and Latif can handle certain threats while staying silent. As a sneak, Latif has several advantages during infiltration. When not grouped with other agents, he moves more quietly and can approach enemies from behind without being detected. Ungroup and switch to Latif to narrow the enforcer's field of vision. Then move Latif behind the enforcer. Alright, so she can stay here. I just need to ungroup, like so. Uh, takedowns. During infiltration, agents can use takedowns to quietly dispatch enemies. This lone sentry is a perfect target for the sneak takedown, Sucker Punch. Switch to Latif, move him behind the sentry and press spacebar. Yeah, he did see me there. <laughs> I messed that one up a little bit. But it's okay, we can just shoot him, it's fine. Not quite what we are supposed to do, but it's alright. I can actually move up to him. Right here. And punch him in the face, or in the back in this case. We have a few options here. There's a signature ability, there's move, there's strike, and there's evade. We'll get more in the future. These are just like very basic. A sweeping compound attack that deals damage and inflicts knockdown upon all adjacent enemies. 1 AP. So this will knock him down, a regular strike will not. We can also use Latif here with the pistol, like so. Targeting. Some abilities need a target. Cycle through all targets in range with a Z or Tab, and select one with spacebar. While targeting, the ability's chance to hit and the chance to hit uh, to score critical damage are displayed on the right side of the screen. Alright. Yeah, so we have 100% chance to hit and 65% chance to crit. There you go. And again. Not what we were supposed to do, but hey. If it works, it works, alright? I'm not much of a stealth person, as many of you probably know. <laughs> this is my idea of stealth. Two guards up ahead. Too many for a sneak to a sucker punch. But the brothers like Ingrid can use slam to take down up to three targets at once. Slam makes more noise than other takedowns. But the dead men don't get suspicious. That's what I'm talking about. That's my kind of stealth right there. Agents have a limited number of takedowns they can perform per mission. The number of users remaining is displayed on the abilities icon. Aww. 
a bit disappointing, but there you go. Yeah, that's the ability slam. Just need to move a bit closer. And there you go. Well, we took them down pretty easily right there. Follow me. Group up again. Get over here. All right, let's keep going. So here's the patrol. Another flunky. Perhaps we can let's switch. Up. Yeah, we can uh, come on, come on. move past them, no problem. We can just run through here, probably. Suspicion. Make too much noise or enter their field of vision and enemies will become suspicious, indicated by a question mark above their head. When an already suspicious enemy sees or hears something fishy, an expanding red circle appears around them, indicating they are searching their surroundings. If an agent gets caught in that red circle, combat will start like it did earlier. But this enforcer has his back turned to some low cover, so he won't so it won't be hard to slip past him undetected. All agents can use cover to stay out of sight, even when inside the enemy's field of vision. Sneaks have an extra trick up their sleeves. When ungrouped and next to any cover, sneaks are cloaked, meaning any enemy can see can only see them when standing right in front of them. Even when uh, they're in that enemy's direct line of sight. Uh, grouping up with other agents will make a sneak easier to spot though. Stay close or split up. It's a gamble either way. All right. Uh, we can get past here quickly enough. Okay, here's a dog we'll actually have to kill, I think. Sooner or later, it will be time to fight. Best to do it on the agent's own terms. Position the agents, then enter turn-based mode with control. Choose that opening attack carefully. As soon as enemies become aware of the agent's presence, they will take cover, making them harder to hit. All agents get a plus 15% to hit bonus in the first round of combat. All right? No problem. So we can ungroup here, and he will be hidden entirely. We can position ourselves uh, not here. Yeah, there's the red circle. So now he will investigate. We can actually bait him to move towards us. And then we can enter combat. So I guess this is a pretty good method. Just bait him to move out of his original position. Agents combat abilities appear in the ability bar at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, we already covered that earlier. Navigate the ability bar, blah, blah, blah. Movement in combat costs 1 or 2 AP, depending on the distance traveled, exactly like in XCOM, basically. Select the move ability, then use W, A, S, and D, or move the mouse to choose the destination. Okay, I mean, we already did that earlier, so... No problem whatsoever. Here, shoot pistol. We can just shoot him twice. Oh no, enemies alerted. Whatever will we do? Bonk him, that's what. Bonk. Well, there you go. That was quick and easy. Let's move on. Another guy. Or two. Take out the two guards on the lower rooftop, alright? No problem. We still have slam available, but only one more. Let's see. I can probably stab that guy right there. Cover. Agents behind cover are harder to hit, providing them with a defensive advantage during combat. The shield icon next to an object indicates whether it provides half cover or full cover. In full cover, agents are more protected, but may lose a line of sight on enemies. Yeah, half cover and full cover is basically the same exact concept as in XCOM, if you played that. Enemies will take advantage of cover too. Flank them to get a clear shot, indicated by the gold trajectory lines visible when moving and targeting. Okay, so we can probably just stab this guy. Okay. Yeah, that should be doable. Bonk. Alright, and then there's one more over here. We can also bonk him. Right this way. Bye bye. There you go. 
So this is a, a pretty big part of the game, the real-time component, just sneaking around. I'm not necessarily much of a stealth person, as you probably know. <laughs> I prefer actual combat. So but as long as it's well balanced, I'm okay with it. As long as there's enough actual turn-based combat, which from what I've seen so far, there definitely is. This is just still the tutorial right here. We'll get to the proper game later. All right, here we got a few dodds. Might be a good moment to use Slam here. Uh, actually, hold on. Uh, yeah, okay, maybe. We still have one more use of Slam. So, not a bad idea. Okay, let's just hide over here. Uh, I'll wait for them to come back. And then we can slam them. Maybe we could slam all three. And uh, that seems like a bit of a stretch, perhaps. Would be doable from the right angle. Maybe a little bit tricky. So they will come over here. I can just slam them right now, I think. Uh, okay, maybe not. They moved. Maybe I can bonk them. I wonder if that would work. So what if I bonk him? Okay, we can bonk one. That's probably fine, I think. That's basically a free kill. So these two guys are very far away. I'm too far away to strike the guy on the left. We do have a decoy ability right here. So it's basically a mimic beacon. Latif sets a 120 HP decoy in a cloud of smoke, becomes invisible and moves to a selected location. Nearby enemies attack the decoy for two rounds or until destroyed. This is even better than a mimic beacon. Alright, well anyway, I do have one shot at this guy. I could kill him, but then I will be stuck in the middle. We could also move into cover and overwatch. Overwatch is a thing in this game. So we can actually just go here, which is only half cover, but we do have evasion. We also have actual evadeability on some of these people right here. It's a self buff. Gain plus one evade. The first attack attempt made against this unit automatically misses. So that's a thing too. Using Overwatch, agents can attack during the enemy round and cut targets out of cover. To use it, set the agent's field of view indicated by highlighted cone. On the next enemy round, the agent will attack the first enemy to enter that cone. Yeah, so in this game, Overwatch is not 360 degrees. Which is probably a good thing. Alright, and since she's a bruiser, she needs to be in melee range. We can go here, just to be closer to the other two guys. There. They will not be close enough to flank me here. We will we'll get a shot at this guy. He will get a shot at us. Alright, miss. Looking good. What's our chance to hit now? Only 40%. So I could move up here, perhaps. I could move up here and shoot him from the flank. That should be 100, I think. That way we'll have flank against the other two guys. Mission report. Mission success. Lady Nicastro has received the deck. Departure slightly delayed as we wait for her to finish praying. All right. Well then, seventy percent. So it's not a guaranteed kill. Okay, yeah, it's a kill. All right. So now, well, I could attack him, but then I'll probably want to move back into cover because I don't want to be standing in the middle. Still, this is only one AP. We can do this. Like so. And uh, this is a debuff, which gives the unit minus one IP for one round. Alright, that's fine. So now we can just back up. Like so. 
I don't have to, but yeah, I don't want to stamp completely in the open. Alright, he missed. Now, he actually could have flanked me if he wanted to. I'm pretty sure he had enough movement. Well, not with only one AP. That part is true. Okay, this will not actually kill him. Close enough. Right, let's check Latif here. What's our chance to hit? Okay, 55%. I can move to flank him, but then the other guy will be able to flank me. And what if we go here? I don't think I'll have... I will have line of sight from here. Okay, I guess that works. That should be 100. 80%. There you go. So that's the combat basics. Yeah, I can hit this guy, but it will not kill him. So really, there's no need to do that. We can just play it safe, move into cover. He will even move closer. Yeah, he moved twice. And I'm close enough, am I? Actually, I'm not. She doesn't actually have a ranged weapon. Yeah, okay, we are close enough. I might not be able to kill him on this turn, though. I would have to hit him twice like this, because if I move to flank him, I will need a crit. So I either have to hit him once with a crit from the flank, or I need to hit him twice. It's hard to say what's more likely. A crit might be more likely, depending on the actual chance to crit, which I don't know what is going to be. Let's just use normal shots here. So it's going to be 70% twice. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm out of ammunition. I did not notice. Ammunition is down here. So flanking was the right move. That's all right. He's about to die anyway. He can shoot me once, but that's about it. Oh no, 20 damage. Whatever will we do. There, done. Area clear. And we still have slum available for later. Alright. The package. I have the package. Nice lift. Now let's get out of here. And now we need to get out of here. Let's go. I have a car just ahead. We can take that to the rendezvous. I'm going to open this package. I think we deserve to know what we just risked our lives to steal. I won't tell. And Mr. L hired us to retrieve playing cards. Blank? Playing cards? A troop of uniformed mercenaries killed a man. For a deck of blank playing cards? Not what I'd call a winning hand. <laughs> I see what you did there. To Mr. L for our paycheck. This is the place. From here we catch an airplane that A hasty escape. Escape with the package. Because I could probably figure it out, but. Let's hope the contact we're meeting knows how. Alright, let's go then. Over the slimy salt tongue of the ocean wafts the deliberate flower scent of fresh oranges. Yeah, okay. Well, here's a guard. The gas masks from Paris are here too? Impossible. Several even. There's no way they got here before we did. Uh, we can go left here, I think. Guarding. This enemy is on guard, indicated by the yellow eye icon over his head. Enemies on guard won't move from their post, but they may call their bodies over to investigate on their behalf. They're also more alert and quicker to catch infiltrating agents, even sneaks who approach from behind. Yes, yeah, so I could only kill this guy with slam. However, we got some tall grass over here. And my favorite part... Explosives. Right here, hazards. That crate of explosives is dangerously close to a pole of flammable oil, and those enforcers' patrol routes take them right past it. When the agents are ready to go loud, enter turn-based mode, select a ranged attack ability, you stab and target the crate of explosives to light it up. 
and keep an eye out for other hazards on the map, either to avoid them or to use them to the agent's advantage. Alright. Call night tonight. No, it's not. That's just what happens when you step through the crossroads. Fastest way to travel, but turns your blood colder than a ghost. Alright. Let's just chill over here. And group. So, there's a patrol. We'll wait for them to come closer. And then we can shoot the crates. Yes, come closer. Right here. Yeah, but that's perfect. Let's go. Let's go. That's going to be a big bomb right there. <laughs> oh wait, I had the wrong person selected. Yeah, I had the melee selected instead of ranged. <laughs> okay, my bad. I'm not sure why I did that. An agent has dropped to zero health and is now in mortal danger. Agents in mortal danger can't fight or move. A teammate has to stabilize them within three rounds or they will be lost. Stabilize agents in mortal danger by sending another agent to their imperiled teammate's side and then using stabilize ability that appears on the ability bar. Hey, this was totally intentional to show off the mechanic. Stabilized agents come back in action dazed and with reduced health. Beware, each agent can only be stabilized twice per mission. If they are downed a third time, that agent is lost. Lost agents are not always gone forever. There may be other ways to recover them later. All right, yeah, I should not have done that, but it's fine. I will have to go like through this fire if I want to do that. We have like three turns to do it, so we actually don't have to do it yet. I'm not sure how long it will take for this fire to go away, though. Alright, let's use Overwatch here, actually. Or maybe not. 85%. Alright, well, that was an XCOM kind of shot. Right there, yeah, here. Three turns remaining. Alright. Yeah, thing is, if I do it right now, she'll be flanked right away. Which is not ideal. I assume I will set myself on fire if I do this. But okay, yeah, I will indeed do that. I'm not done with you yet. I... Okay. I will repay we can move, right? Yep. So way. let's move into cover here. A full cover would be best. There you go. And Latif back into cover. See, we're totally fine. Always have been. All agents must survive. No problem. Here's another crate of explosives. Let's not punch that one. We can shoot it. If I can get close enough. Well, sort of. How about we take care of this guy first? Yeah, we can shoot it. Let's shoot it then. There you go. That works, and he's been knocked down. We got 60 health out of 120. I think that's acceptable. I, regret that it came to this. I can't actually kill this guy. Unless I can hit him with 25%. Nope. So, might be best if we just back up into cover. No need to take unnecessary damage anymore. Now, this dude is not actually dead yet. He was just knocked down. Maybe we can finish him off. I'm out of ammo now. Okay. Well, that's a bit unfortunate. I assume he will move into cover now. Because he will. Let's use evade here. That gives us a guaranteed evasion. As in, they will miss the first attack against us, guaranteed. Not against Latif, though. Alright, I definitely could have done this better. <laughs> but it's alright, it's just the tutorial, it's not that big of a deal. Bye-bye. 
But hey, we showed off the mechanic, all right? It was totally intentional to show off the mechanic. That's my version, and I'm sticking with it. All right, evade. So with only one enemy, I can just stand in the open and use evade. Maybe not always, because they can shoot twice per turn if they want to. So I will not have line of... Actually, I will have line of sight, but he's in full cover. So it's not going to be amazing. He is reloading as well. You'll get it next time. Okay, now the fire is gone. Alright. It's not the worst chance to hit, but it's not great. Okay, there we go. Done. Now we have smoke. Which I assume has an effect as well. So, let's move on, shall we? Yes, let's. We are in a totally great shape still. No problem here whatsoever. Eddie. He will make a fine addition to our squad. Y'all got the package? That depends. Are you the pilot? Me? No. I'm the guy who's gonna get you to him in one piece. Promise? Picking locks. Eddie is a saboteur. Saboteurs can pick locks and they use shock mines to take down enemies during infiltration. The door up ahead is locked. Switch to Eddie to pick the lock and open it. Alright? There's Eddie. On the move. I assume this is the pilot. And we're going in the opposite direction. <laughs> inventory. Agents can pick and carry useful items in their inventory. Anything an agent picks up is displayed in the inventory slots on their ability tray at the bottom of the screen. To use an item, first select its inventory slot, blah blah blah. Items like medkits are usable in both real-time infiltration and turn-based combat, while targetable items like grenades are only usable in turn-based. To drop an item, select an inventory slot and press I. Once the item appears on the ground, other agents can always grab it for themselves. Yeah, I can use this. Alright, we got some bandages. Yeah, actually, we can drop the bandages and heal somebody up, like Latif. He's not in the best shape ever. There, that's much better. Incident report. Okay, let's move on. In this direction, I assume. Pleased to meet you. They call me the gentleman G. Sure thing. Your turn, sister. Just Ingrid will do. Let's keep moving. This is his ability. Okay, here's a dude. Looks like he's on his own. Let's split up. Shock mines. During infiltration, saboteurs can throw shock mines to lure an enemy out of position. Those who come to investigate will find themselves on the receiving end of a deadly electric current. On detonation, shock mines will also electrify water and ignite oil. Alright, I like that. This is just one guy though. And this is limited use, just like slam. So, I don't necessarily want to waste it. If I don't have to, uh, that's not quite what I had in mind. Will he just keep facing in this direction? Yeah, I just want to knock him out with Sucker Punch. I think we can do that. Go on. There. Yeah, that works. Just save the mines. No need to waste them. Okay, let's move on. I'm still getting used to the controls, especially in real time. And you can't really pause real time. I mean, you can open the main menu right here and that will pause the game. But you can't like actually pause. You can't use a tactical pause. The only way you can do that is if you enter turn-based mode with control. Okay, here are a few dudes. I assume we're supposed to kill them and over here. So this guy will not move as far as I can tell. We can kill him with the mine. Oh, wait, wait, he is indeed moving. Hold on then, hold on. 
I think I can take him out. If we can catch up quickly enough before he turns his way. Yep, there we go. We got him. Alright. Firebomb. That sounds promising. Okay, and the key. That's probably something we need. Come on, come on. Let's join up again. And let's grab that firebomb. Oh, yep, they're coming. Hide, 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 hide. Sit tight. Okay, ungroup. All right, all right. Well, I could use the shock mine now. But she will turn in the other direction. Okay, there are several over there. I did not want to group up. Yeah, this is a great target for the shock mine. Bomb, whatever. Easy. Let's throw it. That should work. Go on. Okay, it, she wasn't standing in the water. That's unfortunate. Okay, they will see me, I think. Wait, wait, shocked, shocked. So it is working. It didn't work quite like I wanted it to. But it did work. Okay, I did not want to group up there. Like I said, I'm still getting used to controls. I think I'll have to fight. They are coming. Will they see me? I don't have slam, but I don't want to waste that if I don't have to. And there's another one in the back. Well, slam would be pretty good here. Oh, yep, yeah, hold on. Yeah, I have to fight because they will see me. That's fine. We'll fight. It's not that big of a deal. I can just strike twice from where I'm standing right here. I charge extra for no problem. Well, not twice, but yeah, we can still do it twice. I think we'll kill them both, maybe. This is 100%. I will be in the open, but I think we can kill them both. You know your place. Now that's what I like. A killer instinct gives us plus one AP for a killing blow, so I can actually move into cover after a killing blow. What can Eddie do here? He has... right, dual shoot. We can do that from the flank, we can do it from point-blank range, basically. There, ranged basic attack. Eddie fires twice with his revolvers, targeting up to two different enemies. Or the same enemy twice. Like in this case. Very nice. I like him already. And clear. Let's move on. We still got that firebomb as well. We saved that for later. What's this? Oh yeah, the key. Some doors can only be opened using keys. Once an agent picks up a key, any of them may use it to open the corresponding door. Alright? We got it. Is that it? Uh, nope. It's probably in the back. Or is that it? Okay, that's it. There's the aeroplane. We're getting close. So now we need to get to the other side and also grab the pilot. We still have a few abilities here. We have the shock mine. We have slam. Slam would be good. Roll out. Yeah, slam would be good. Let's see where they are patrolling exactly. I saw a patrol. Recon mode. Scoundrels know the value of casing the area before things get loud. Activate recon mode and move the cursor over the objects on the map to gain insights about the agent's surroundings. Okay, we can do that. Recon mode. That also pauses the game. Okay, that's good. So that's how we can pause the real-time infiltration mode. Doesn't actually allow you to queue up any actions, but you can pause. Okay, so we need to get here. Right here. Alright. Dynamite. Oil. Water. Okay, and that's the pilot. 
Sounds good. So you guys should probably hide here for a moment. We don't have that firebomb. Scions. Lady Nicastro is a deadly adversary. When scions like her are on the field, there's no shame in running to live and fight another day. The escape route is that aeroplane at the end of the dock. Reach it to escape Lady Nicastro. And don't forget the pilot. Uh, okay, so we're supposed to avoid her. Okay. Well, we can kill this dude with the shock mine, I assume. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the only actual problem is that he might see me. Hold on, there's a patrol coming. Let's back up. I don't think they will come here. It uh, doesn't seem like it. I could kill them with slam if I really wanted to. Not sure if I would be far enough from the others to not be detected. But we can try later. So let's kill this dude with the mine. Throw shock mine. Hey, what's that over there? Okay, got it. Then we'll grab the pilot. Uh, hopefully undetected. Oh, yep, hold on. They will investigate. So let's back up. Yeah, let's actually back up because we don't want them to detect us. Yet. Not yet. Yeah, I'm just going to back up. Just move out of view entirely for now. And then we could try slam, perhaps. Maybe after we grab the pilot. Is it safe? There's the patrol we saw earlier. Not entirely safe yet. Yeah, this person. Wait, don't tell me she will just stay there. Nope, she's moving. Okay, I can probably take her out with a sucker punch. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Might not be entirely safe to do. No. I just want to grab the pilot here. Wait for this patrol to move out of the way. Is this where they're coming? Will anyone patrol through here? Yeah, they will. Will they? No, not really. Okay, no they won't. Hold on, hold on. Is it safe? Uh, no, wait, can I... Yes, we can take out that person. Good. Grab the pilot. On missions, allies like Captain Nikki have a few tricks up their sleeves, but their little worth lies off the battlefield. Okay, so let's hide. Maybe we can get out like without even engaging in combat. That would be nice. So now we can take out the patrol with slam. So what can Captain do here? We have some grenades or whatever these are, all right? So let's try to take them out with slam. Maybe I can avoid them entirely. But taking them out would be better. So we know they won't patrol through here, meaning we can just move up with everyone. Keep up. Group up. Wait, wait. Oh, there's someone over here. Whoops. Okay, my bad. Actually, my bad. No, go away, go away! Ah, oh, damn it! Okay, I was a little bit too slow. They caught me off guard. I thought it's safe to set up over here. I actually thought it's safe. But unfortunately, it was not. It was indeed not. Well, okay, that is very unfortunate. Let's actually sprint over here. We have that scion out there somewhere, and we're not supposed to fight it. Okay, over here. Just to move towards our actual exit point. I don't really want to charge in this situation. No, not really. Let's just move towards the exit. There are some explosives on the left. Maybe we can take advantage of that. We still have the decoy. 
We have the fire grenade. Where do I move Latif, though? This might be a good moment to use decoy. Don't want to do it just yet, though. I want to be in cover, but I can't really be in cover in this situation right now. Alright, well, let's just overwatch. It probably won't trigger, but alright. Yeah, there's the Scion. 60 damage and the bleeding. Yeah, we need to get out. That's the plan. There, okay, it will trigger. So wait, they are melee. Melee only, I think. That seems to be the case. Yeah, that was a nasty attack right there. We have a smoke bomb. Create smoke in the target area. Incoming attacks against units in smoke have minus 25% chance to hit and crit, alright? And this is going to be a bit problematic here. We can take out that guard on the left. But I need to be close enough to actually shoot the dynamite. Which I am not right now. How much health on uh, the Scion person? 350 health. That's probably a bit too much for me to deal with. I think so. Yeah, that's probably a bit too much. Well, let's keep moving. I'll just have to stand over here. Which should be fine. What now? We do have barrage. Not good at the moment, though. I could use Onslaught to knock her down. Might not be worth using on a single target, but maybe it is. Maybe it actually is. I think it might be. I think it actually might be. Units cannot perform actions until they're back on their feet. Okay, what the heck, let's use that then. Okay, she has like Bladestorm kind of deal. Attacks enemies that enter melee range. Okay, now we can back up. I'm at 40 health on Ingrid. We do have that smoke grenade. Might be a good idea to throw it right now. We're also bleeding, which is not ideal. I think I'll have to heal that up. I'm not sure if I can do that right now. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that right now. I don't think I can. I'll have to stabilize the pilot once the pilot gets knocked out. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. What is this? Some kind of a... Okay. All right, and no idea what that is. Did she just disappear? I think so. <laughs> I can't see anything for that smoke. Are we still bleeding? I don't think we are. I can't tell. We have a guard over here. Okay, Eddie will have to draw some fire. He's at full health here. And we still got the explosives. So two guards over here. Maybe now I could use barrage. Not much point in saving it. But two enemies. I can probably do pretty good damage with the jewel shoot. Let's actually attack this guy twice because we got 85%. I was hoping for one crit, but alright. That's fine. Strike. I don't think I can kill both of them. Uh, that's not gonna happen. That is actually not gonna happen. Especially since Latif is so far away. So I definitely can't kill them both. Oh, yeah, but there's the Scion. Whatever her name is. And another enemy. There are quite a few around here. There are quite a few. I'm pretty sure I'll have to stabilize someone soon. What are you waiting for? To the 
So if I punch him again right now, I will be completely flanked in the open on someone who has 20 health and has already been stabilized once. Probably not the best idea ever. Probably not, no. So let's just at least hide over there. I'm assuming I'll have to stabilize the pilot. <laughs> I don't think he's going to survive this turn. I don't think that's gonna happen. And he only has one AP left. Which means I can't really do anything on him anymore. Yeah, I can't do anything. I can throw another smoke bomb. But I kind of want to move. I can throw a smoke bomb here. Which is perhaps not a terrible idea. I'm pretty sure he will go down here. Unless Latif can soak up some damage. Okay, evade. Evade again, very nice. 20 damage, that's fine. I'm a bit concerned about these guards though, right here. Okay, this is fine. They attacked the two people who actually had the health to take the damage. Sion retreating. Oh, alright. Well, that makes our life significantly easier. However, now my actual enemies are inside the smoke. Let's see then. Well, I can punch one of them. I'm so low on health right now, but at least the Scion is gone. Two shots. Yeah, two shots will do the trick. And I do have the ammo. Barely, but I do. There you go. Alright, can I kill both of these guys right now? Well, perhaps. Not if I miss. Yeah, missed twice. I blame the smoke, alright? I don't really want to shoot him twice, because that's a waste. There we go, perfect. Both shots hit. And we can probably kill him. Maybe. Yeah, we can kill him. Now I can punch him. With that said, I kind of needed the smoke in that situation. This might still miss. Again, I blame the smoke. <laughs> Nope, done. Area clear. Okay. Let's get out. Never not had it. We are perfectly fine. I guess there's no real need to heal ourselves if the area is clear. Alright, let's get out. We're done. So that concludes the tutorial. And the intro of sorts. Bandages. I'm not sure if these items will persist. So maybe we can take a look around before we leave. In case there's more stuff we can pick up. Like bandages or something. Yeah, there's something over here. More bandages. If we get to keep them after, it's definitely worth taking a look around. I think that might be it now. Alright, let's leave. That was very smooth. And done. We just saved you. So overall, quite a fun game, at least so far. But I wanted to see more. Here we are. Del Vasto's Landing. Now we find out what kind of man pays this well for a blank deck of plane cards. Wouldn't mind knowing who the hell we were fighting back in Marseille. Never seen troops like that before. Let's see what this Mr. L has to say for himself. A lovely little Mediterranean. All right then. Here, Mr. L. I assume you are Mr. L. I have that dubious privilege. Welcome, Mr. Lejin, Ms. Erickson, Mr. Sawyer. Do you have the undrawn hand? We have a package for you. What's inside? We can say, of course. <laughs> of course. Ah, of course. Regardless, that deck of cards is key to your next job for me. Slow down, pal. 
Who says we're interested in a next job? The last one burned your courier. And those two saw the body. Then you three may divvy his pay among yourselves. And I'll sweeten the pot for this next one. Fifty percent. You sound desperate. Okay, Mr. L, I'll humor you. But the question is, 50% of what? Because 50% of zero is still zero. In a word, sabotage. I'm in a race, you see. A race to find an ancient ruin, a tower. You may know it under one of its other names. The Axis Mundi. The World Tree. The Tower of Babel. Oh, you're an archaeologist then. That's disappointing. <laughs> I am no archaeologist, Monsieur Lejeune, and my rivals in this race are even less so. I want to preserve the tower. My enemies want to ransack it. It cannot be allowed to fall into their hands. But it can fall into yours, huh? And the gal with the sword. She's one of these rivals? Zorana Nicastro. Yes, she and two others, a nobleman and an industrial tycoon. Each is the scion of their own <laughs> noble house, collectively. They call themselves the Banished Court. Scions of the Banished Court. Mm-hmm. And how close are they to finding the tower? They've already found it. You said you were in a race. I was. And I... <laughs> okay, then... <laughs> But I'm not out of the fight yet. My enemies have yet to enter the tower. It is a dangerous place, and their preparations are incomplete. I want you three to sabotage their efforts until I can find the tower myself. Sabotage, huh? You have a target in mind? My sources have identified an outpost belonging to another of the court's three leaders. The tycoon, Trace Marteau. Marteau. Isn't that the famous American industrialist? The one who's always in the papers? The very same. I want you to infiltrate his outpost, sabotage a machine you'll find at the center, and return to me. Sabotage requires a subtle hand. You'll need me. In the spirit of charity, I accept. You'll need me too. But if the other two scions are anything like Nicastro, I ain't risking my neck for free. Mr. Sawyer is right. Double our fee, Mr. L, and we'll get to work. Double it is. And please, call me Locke. Okay, then. Well, there you go. Dalvastos Landing. Welcome to Dalvastos Landing. This tiny Mediterranean island serves as Locke's hideout, a place to take refuge from his enemies and plan his next moves. Now it will do the same for the agents in his employ. Navigate to the world map in the menu on top of the screen to plan the agent's next move. Alright then. We can have some conversations too. Here are our supplies and some other stuff. I'm sure we'll get into that later. This is the world map Locke uses to plan his secret war against the scions of the banished court. Use it to track the court's progress and plan the agent's next moves. A pin on the map represents the sabotage job Locke wants done against one of the scions, Trace Marteau. Select it to begin the mission. Yeah, there it is, that's the one. Destroy a generator built by Marteau Industries. This is a critical mission. And the rewards? This mission introduces a new enemy type, Scourges. Okay, sounds fun. And what else do we have here? The agent screen. This is the agent screen. Use this to view use this view to manage the scoundrels in Locke's employ by equipping items to prepare them for their next mission and spending skill points to unlock new tricks of the trade. The agents earned some skill points from retrieving the undrawn hand. Spend them now by selecting skills in the upper left. Okay, so we have six skill points right here. And we have three people. So, skills. Skill trees. This is an agent skill tree. Here, spend skill points earned from missions to unlock nodes and open new paths, allowing the agents to grow stronger and even learn new abilities. Skill points are shared resource, and agents can benefit from them without having participated in the mission that earned them. 
spread your current skill points out between Ingrid, Latif and Eddie, or drop them all on a single agent. Okay, stick and move, melee debuff ability, a devastating hit and run attack that inflicts blinded and grants Ingrid a free move action. Okay. Push kick. So we can push a target two tiles, meaning out of cover. Pushed targets can collide with other objects or enemies, causing knockdown. Okay. Killer Instinct 2. Melee Overwatch. Hot Pursuit. Passive ability upon using stick and move, Ingrid gains plus two speed. Fortitude. Okay, let's check the others. Distract. Latif inflicts blinded to all enemies in an area. Affected enemies prioritize attacking Latif. AoE 4. Okay. Running shot. A hit and run attack that deals plus 50% additional damage per evade stack on Latif. Latif gains a free move action. If the target dies, Latif gains additional plus one evade. Sounds good. Decoy to unshakable. Negates one incoming stress. Okay. And Eddie. Light them up. Attacks up to four targets, ammo permitting. Hit targets are flushed out of their current locations, abandoning cover if applicable. All targets gain marked. I like the sound of that. Bullseye. A devastating ability shot that is guaranteed to hit, has plus 15% chance to crit, and deals double damage. Deals additional bonus damage against marked targets. Okay, I really like that. Let's pick that up. That leaves us with three more skill points. So I could do the same on a different agent, or we could pick up one of these. Hit them hard. Upon manually activating the reload ability, Eddie gains plus 20% crit chance until the end of round. Passive reload abilities such as quick load do not trigger this effect. Eddie's attacks gain plus 25% chance to cause marked. That sounds like a good synergy with Bullseye. I think I'll pick up this fact, however. And running shot. That definitely sounds useful. Plus 50% additional damage per evade stack. And gains a free move action. And additional plus an evade if the target dies. And this AoE blind sounds useful too. Here, that's what we'll do. Then we also have the supplier. In addition to piloting the gateway plane, at the getaway plane, Captain Nikki sells a variety of rare and dubiously legal items. From this screen, all good captain, the good captain will gladly trade his words for the supplies that agents earn on missions and expeditions. So bandages, flash bomb, smoke bomb, and fire bomb. I'll probably want to buy some of that. So bandage heals 40 HP. Flash Bomb applies marked and blinded to everyone in the target area. Fire Bomb creates a burning hazard. Okay, let's grab maybe like two bandages. A Fire Bomb. That's probably fine. There will be more in here later. Weapon mod, armor. Okay, I think that's going to be it. There are some conversations we can also have in here. Okay, portable radios. In the war, they're big as rucksacks and heavy as sin. The modern world is one of strange and rapid. All right then. All this for one long lost tower, huh? Yes, indeed. Yeah, you ask too many questions. Besides, I've seen my share of archaeological expeditions. Most of the time, everyone goes home empty. Yeah, this Listen, doesn't I'm sound like an archaeological it's expedition. Trace Marteau is in a secret alliance. I wonder, Mr. Gentleman. Now, if you'll excuse. All right, you guys talk too much. Oh, you finally have your Was it worth it? I don't know. We'll see. Drawn hand is no ordinary deck of cards. Oh yeah, you're going to do a reading, see your future. Can you see my future? Centuries of study. And we okay. scratch the surface of the card's potential. But we know this. The undrawn hand doesn't predict the future. It changes it. Can it give me a future where I have a secret island of my own and don't have to work for you anymore? The cards prefer those who tempt fate. 
Perhaps if you keep sticking your neck out in the field, like you did in Marseille. Oh, that's my specialty. That's definitely my specialty. Going fast and dangerous. Okay, well, I think that's going to be the end of this video. But I will definitely continue playing. This game looks pretty good. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Hopefully it will be a good XCOM fix. <laughs> because I've been looking for a good XCOM fix for a while. And yeah, but, well, either way, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.